in a beautiful ponderosa pine tree forest in Washington State. I love spending time with these huge trees and all the life that they support. I also love that ponderosa pine trees offer us so much food, medicine, and other gifts. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make two types of pine needle tea, a medicinal brew, and a delicious recipe sure to impress your friends and family. Also in this episode, I'll be sharing the benefits and side effects of the ponderosa pine tree. Hello and welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, a show exploring how herbs heal as medicine, as food, and through nature connection. I'm your host, Rosalie de la Forêt. I created this YouTube channel to share trusted herbal wisdom so that you can get the best results when relying on herbs for your health. I love offering up practical knowledge to help you dive deeper into the world of medicinal plants and seasonal living. Each episode of the Herbs with Rosalie podcast is shared on YouTube as well as your favorite podcast app. Transcripts and recipes for each episode can be found at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com or through the link in the video description. Also in the video description, you'll find other helpful resources. For example, to get my best herbal tips, as well as fun bonuses, be sure to sign up for my weekly herbal newsletter. Okay, grab your cup of tea and let's dive in. My office windows look out onto this beautiful ponderosa pine tree behind me. Many of the moments of my day are spent gazing at the branches and the life within it. A squirrel is a frequent visitor gnawing on pine cones, leaving a midden of pine cone scales below. I've seen many birds stop for a rest, including really cute pig meows. This is what my dad would have jokingly called cheap entertainment. Cheap, of course, only in price. The moments of peace and beauty around a pine tree are truly priceless. Pine trees are conifer or evergreen trees within the Pinus genus. You probably have pine growing near you as there are at least 126 recognized species of pine trees across the globe. Pine trees can live for hundreds or even thousands of years. One of the world's oldest living organisms is a bristlecone pine tree called Methuselah, who is roughly 4,600 years old. The land that my husband and I live on and caretake is filled with ponderosa pine trees from the smallest of saplings to these large giants towering hundreds of feet into the sky. Our home is a log cabin constructed with large pine and Douglas fir logs. Chances are your home is built with pine too, as pines are one of the most commercially important trees grown across the globe and are frequently used in home construction. We even rely on ponderosa pine wood to keep us warm. While the softwood isn't ideal for burning in a wood stove, we use it mixed with Douglas fir in our wood stove. And it keeps us warm and is 100% cat approved. Pines give us many gifts beyond its timber. The needles, pine resin bark, and pollen are potent herbal medicines. While towering ponderosa pine trees are not often thought of as herbs, this is a powerful plant medicine. By the way, if you'd like a printable ebook filled with pine tree information and lots of recipes, then click the link in the video description to get your free copy. Ponderosa pine tree medicines are warming and aromatic. I love their scent, whether it's their amber-like resinous qualities or the mild vanilla aromatics of their bark. Ponderosa medicine is warming and drying. We work with this medicine to warm us up and to help move stuck moisture like congestion in the lungs. Depending on the part you're tasting, ponderosa pines can be pungent, bitter, even sour. If you're new to the concepts of herbal energetics and understanding if a plant or condition is hot or cold or damp or dry, then I highly recommend my free herbal jumpstart course. This short video course takes you through the ins and outs of herbal energetics, and by the time you finish, you'll have increased your herbal knowledge tenfold. This course is entirely free to everyone who joins my herbal newsletter community. In addition to getting the free herbal jumpstart course, you'll also hear from me every Wednesday with my best herbal tips and recipes. Look for the link to sign up in the show notes. 
If you're looking at ponderosa pine tree information online, then you'll see it often repeated that it isn't safe. As someone who has been drinking pine needle tea for a long time, I disagree. I decided to chase down the source of this information, and here's what I found. There's a study showing that cattle eating large amounts of ponderosa needles aborted their fetuses. This side effect hasn't been seen in humans or even other animals, but it is frequently recommended that people avoid eating the needles or having the tea during pregnancy and breastfeeding. This seems like a fair precaution. However, having small to moderate amounts of pine needles is gonna be fine for most people. Have you nibbled on a pine needle lately? It has a surprising taste, certainly resinous with a touch of bitter, but the most notable flavor that initially bursts on your tongue is the tart, sour taste indicating high vitamin C levels. Per gram, pine needles have more vitamin C than an orange. The young needles have less than the older needles, although the younger needles tend to have tastier making tea. To get the most vitamin C from pine needles, eat them raw or infuse them into honey or cold water. Making a tea from pine needle needles does destroy some of the vitamin C, but some remains in the warm brew. A simple pine needle tea is a delicious beverage and something that can be enjoyed anytime by a healthy person. I love sipping on pine needle tea knowing that I'm tasting the forest around me. I have a couple of pine needle tea recipes for you in just a bit. There's also several ways pine needle tea can be helpful during a cold or an influenza virus. A strong pine needle tea pulls out more of the resinous, pungent qualities, and in this form, the medicine becomes a stimulating expectorant and diaphoretic. I especially love it for thinning congested mucus in the lungs and sinuses. For the best results, you can breathe in the steam deeply as you drink. Pine needles are also soothing to a sore throat, either as a hot beverage or infused into honey. When a pine tree is injured, it exudes this thick, sticky, resinous substance. This pine resin forms a protective layer across the bark and it helps to repel or trap boring insects. It's also antimicrobial, thus further protecting the tree from pathogens. Pine resin offers strong medicine to us too. It's widely used externally as a vulnerary pain reliever and a drawing preparation to remove splinters or other foreign objects from the body. Herbalist Michael Moore recommends chewing a current-sized piece of pitch to swiftly encourage strong, fruitful expectoration and a general softening of bronchial mucus. I've tried chewing on it, and I didn't really love the way it stuck to my teeth, but teach their own. Pine resins have long been used to ease rheumatic and muscular pain as a topical cream, topical salve, or a bath herb. A salve made from pine resin can be rubbed on the chest and back to relieve lung congestion. Pine pollen has become something of a superfood fad in recent years. It's being marketed and sold as this hormonal cure-all. I'm a bit of a skeptic here, while I have no doubt that pine pollen offers us food and medicine, the most vocal and outrageous claims often come from people selling expensive pine pollen medicines. I first learned about pine pollen as a nutrient-dense wild food. We would harvest the pollen in the spring and then add it to crepes and pancakes. A review of pine pollen as medicine within traditional Chinese medicine studies found that pine pollen had a lot of potential in regards to alleviating skin conditions. The review stated that its use as a topical agent, especially for skin diseases, was notable. Some years the conditions are just right to have a pine pollen storm. All you need is a mature male pine cones that are filled with pollen and then a bit of wind. When this happens, it looks like a thick dust storm, but it's all pollen. Weeks after a pine pollen storm, you can still find me sweeping pine pollen off of our decks and dusting it from inside the house. Which, on a related note, if there's a pine pollen storm, it's a really good idea to shut your windows. 
Pine bark, especially the inner cambium, is worked with similarly as the needles and pitch for increasing expectoration and supporting the immune system. A decoction of the inner bark is considered to be stronger than the needles and was historically used for lung infections. The cambium was commonly eaten sometimes as a famine food by various First Nation peoples. With a bit of training, you can sustainably harvest the cambium. However, it's just a lot easier to work with the pine needles. Trees in the Pinus genus can be distinguished from other conifers by their needles. Pine trees have needles bound in groups of two or more, and there's a papery sheath holding them together at the bottom. There are at least 126 recognized species of pine. To determine your local species, reference a local tree field guide. Ponderosa pine is the most widely distributed pine species in North America. It loves to grow in sunny locations in mountainous regions. The needles grow from five to 10 inches long and are in bundles of three, sometimes two. The female cones are four to six inches long. When mature, they turn upside down to release their seeds. Bark on the young trees is brown to black. Older tree bark has large scales and the bark is more of a reddish or orange color, kind of like my scarf. The thick bark scales protect the tree from natural fires that often occur in ponderosa pine habitats. You might be wondering if other pine trees or even evergreens can be worked with similarly to what I've shared about ponderosa pine. In our book, Wild Remedies, we have an entire chapter about evergreen trees, including how to identify and harvest several of the many different species out there. We also share a lot of my favorite winter recipes like evergreen seasoning salt, spiced evergreen liqueur, evergreen oxymel, evergreen infused herbal oil, which can then be used to make a forest facial cream and lip balm. Wild Remedies is perfect for you if you want to learn more about the plants growing near you. Included within each chapter is safety information, sustainable harvest instructions, and lots of fun and easy recipes like this one. You can order Wild Remedies from your favorite bookstore. Check out the back of the book to access your exclusive bonuses. To make a pine needle tea, you can harvest the needles at any time of the year. The fresh new growth will taste better and is a great thing to add to foods, but the older needles have a higher vitamin C content. In the wintertime, I'm often using these older needles. I'm gonna share how to make two different pine needle teas. One can be a potent herbal medicine. The other is more of a crowd pleasing tea that can be enjoyed whenever you're feeling like sipping on the bit of the forest. You might be wondering if you can use any pine tree for this recipe. The answer is yes, but be sure to properly identify the tree you're working with. Although most Pinaceae trees are safe, not all evergreens are. Avoid the potentially deadly yew, Taxus species, which has single flat needles and distinctive red berries. And though it's not truly a pine, the so-called Norfolk Island pine is something that can cause gastrointestinal upset and dermatitis. Another thing to consider is the ethical harvest. Some pine family trees are endangered, threatened, or under stress from drought, fire, or pine beetles. Learn about your area's particular species and ecosystem before harvesting. When you do harvest, gather a handful of needles from different trees to avoid causing too much stress on any one tree. So this recipe we're making is a strong pine needle tea that's just a simple tea that will help you with common symptoms of a cold or flu, like a sore throat, congested sinuses, and congested lungs. This brew is specifically a stimulating expectorant, which means it moves stuck mucus. I wouldn't reach for it unless you are experiencing a lot of congestion. The ingredients for this tea, very simple. A handful of fresh pine needles, roughly chopped, about 10 grams, and then two cups of water. You can place the needles and the water in a small saucepan, then turn the heat to medium high and bring to a simmer, then reduce the heat and maintain a low simmer for 20 minutes. Then you can strain it, add honey or another sweetener of your choice if you'd like, 
and drink it warm. Okay, our next tea is how to make a crowd-pleasing pine needle tea recipe. I love drinking pine needle teas. It's truly the taste of the earth that I live on. In this recipe, I combine other favorite winter spices to create a delicious tea that can be enjoyed as an after meal, digestive tea, or just as part of a winter celebration. The ingredients for this recipe are a handful of fresh pine needles, roughly chopped, about 10 grams, one tablespoon of dried elderberries, about seven grams, one tablespoon dried rose hips, about 10 grams, two thin slices of an orange or mandarin, one cinnamon stick, three cloves, a teaspoon of grated fresh ginger, one star anise pod, three cups of water, and then honey or another desired sweetener to taste. Making this tea is simple. You just wanna place all the herbs and spices and water into a small saucepan. Then turn the heat to medium high and bring to a simmer. Then reduce the heat to maintain this low simmer for 10 minutes or so. You wanna make sure that this is covered. Once it's done, you can strain, add honey or another sweetener of your choice if desired, and then drink warm. I love giving you quick tips on herbal medicine making. That's because I believe that when you work directly with plants to make the remedies that you and your family depend on, you're creating a lifetime of skills and knowledge that go way beyond simply listening to me. But to really succeed with herbal medicine, you need more than a few quick tips. That's why I co-teach a four season online course that shows you exactly how to make a variety of potent herbal medicines from start to finish. If you wanna be the person that you and your family and friends rely on for effective herbal medicines, then check out Emily Hans and my course, Rooted Medicine Circle. This course only enrolls in January, so check it out soon and get on the wait list at rootedmedicinecircle.com for future openings. If you'd like a free printable recipe card of these beautifully illustrated pine needle tea recipes, then visit the link in the video description. You can also find more pine tree information and tips in our book, Wild Remedies. If you enjoyed this video on ponderosa pine trees and you value trusted herbal information, then I hope you'll stick around. The best way to get started is to hit the subscribe button and if you're really into herbs, then sign up for my weekly newsletter so you can be the first to get my best herbal insights and recipes. Ponderosa pine fun fact. Pines are a towering gift of this earth, whether they're providing us shelter, warmth, food, or medicine. Even pine pollen storms are a bountiful source of nutrients for the grounds that they fall on. Each year, a massive quantity of pollen falls to the ground and enriches the soil, feeding soil microbes and small creatures like worms with all the nutrition it embodies. I love the image of these towering ponderosa pine trees circling around to feed the smallest microbes growing at their feet. All right, I don't know about you all, but I'm really cold. So thanks for joining me. See you next time.